I titled this Pray with the Number Four Others Intentionally, and I want to share from uh, with you from Colossians chapter 1, four aspects of praying that I think will serve us well in these days in which we find ourselves. Specifically, I'm going to um, share verses 9 through 11. And well, yeah, actually, no, I've got to go all the way to 12. Um, so I'm going to let me read that and then I'm going to um, launch into these four ways that we can pray for others. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And we pray this in order that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Um, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all might according to his glorious power so that you may have great endurance and patience, Um, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. This passage is one that I keep on a card in my prayer area And um, on a particular day of um, the week, I pray this for um, folks that I have committed um, to pray. So as you're thinking about praying for others, here are four things that I want you to keep in mind uh, as you are praying. Now, I believe that prayer is, is just important during these times because there are so many things out of our control Praying is within our control. We can make the choice to daily pray. We can make the choice to pray throughout the day. We can make choices about what we pray, about for whom we pray. These are all things that are within our control. And when, let's face it, when there are a ton of things out of our control, we don't like it. I mean, the reality is even those who aren't control freaks, we all have this desire to control. It makes us feel better. We, we, um, we, we tend to like knowing how things are going to go or what we can do. And so when we're out of control, we can feel anxious. We can feel depressed. We can begin to um, have um, be contentious. So we're more on edge. We tend to speak in ways that we're not characterized by when things are out of our control. We will lash out. Um, We begin to see things negatively when we maybe are characterized as being more positive. When things are out of our control, it dramatically impacts how we're engaging people and how we're engaging the world. So So it's important that we realize that right now prayer is something we can control and why what would happen if every time we felt out of control we went to prayer every time we felt like we were going to spiral into some negativity we went to prayer every time we went to get angry at someone or something or a way that things are being handled we went right to prayer Every time we felt like someone was doing something that would cause us to flush up with anger or resentment or bitterness, we went right to prayer. The prayer is our way of communicating with God. And Paul is committed throughout his letters in the New Testament of encouraging us to pray. So let me get right to it on these four um four things that I want you to consider as you pray for others. First, Paul says that I have not I have not ceased to pray for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. So the first aspect is that you're praying for people, those for whom you are praying, to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. To be filled with the knowledge of God, period. People need the Lord. And it's important that we're praying for people to come to know him, that we're praying for people to grow in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man, it says in Luke 2.52. So are we praying for people to be filled with 
wisdom and with his knowledge. And it specifically says, pray with wisdom and spiritual understanding. We need to realize that there is so much more going on than just COVID-19. We are also engaged in spiritual warfare. There, there are things happening in the unseen that are also at work. And so we need our leaders. We need our friends, our family members to be filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding that we realize that yes, the president, when he said that we are fighting an unseen enemy, listen, those of us in the church have been fighting an unseen enemy for years, thousands of years. Um, And that unseen enemy is Satan. And so we are well equipped for this fight. So can I say to you, those of you who watch this, if you are a Christ follower, you are a a believer in Jesus Christ, then you have in front of you, in God's word, whether it's in front of you or it's on your, your, your smart device, you have what is necessary to fight an unseen enemy that is also at work in this. Now, please hear me, let me clarify. You fight the enemy of the virus utilizing what we know to work, you know, which is washing your hands and avoiding those public places of, you know, touching things and washing your hands and avoiding touching your face and your mouth and your eyes and your nose. And when when sick, you fight that with appropriate medications and going to see health providers. So hear me, that I firmly believe in. What I'm saying is that there's also an unseen enemy at work known as the devil who would, who would ca- try to capitalize on what is happening in our world for the harm of your spiritual walk. And so we want to pray for ourselves and for others to be filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding. The second aspect is that we want people to walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him and being fruitful in every good work. So that number two is that you're praying for people to walk worthy of the Lord. Listen, are you praying for your fellow Christians to walk worthy of the faith that they profess that they have? Listen, we've had years of goodness in our land. We've had years of goodness in our land. And now we are faced with, uh, we are faced with a challenge. We are faced with death. We are faced with sickness. We are faced with a pandemic. And how is our faith being revealed? We should be praying for one another to walk worthy, to walk worthy of the Lord, that we are pleasing him and we are fruitful in every good work. Now is the time for those of us who say, I am a Christian, I am a Christ follower, for us to actually show that by walking worthy of the faith that we we profess to have. Number three, not only are we praying to be filled with the knowledge and those for whom we pray to be filled with the knowledge of God, but that, and we're praying for them to walk worthy. The third aspect is that they are strengthened with all power, according to God's glorious might, all oh, that we would have great endurance and patience. We need to pray that we all appropriate the power of God that he has provided through the Holy Spirit and that not only are we appropriating that power, but that we realize we are strengthened by that power. And by being strengthened by that power, we also are given the ability to have great endurance and patience. Where do you need great endurance and patience? For me, it's having to sit in this house day after day after day. I need great endurance and patience. I want to be out. I want to be hugging people. I want to be encouraging people. I want to be seeing them. I want to be speaking to them face to face, not just on the other side of the screen. Have I done this? Yes, I've been doing it for years. That does not take the place of being in someone's physical presence. So I need great endurance and patience in that. Where do you need great endurance and patience? I'd love for you to drop a comment on that because I will commit to pray for you to have great endurance and patience. We need great endurance and patience in helping our children who are now all engaging in e-learning when we're used to having a teacher in the classroom teach that. 
We need great endurance and patience when we realize that, you know, work has dried up or furloughs have come or layoffs have happened and there is no income coming into the bank and yet rent is due and electricity is due and food is needed. We need great endurance and patience, trusting to, that God will be our provider. Where do you need great endurance and patience? So yes, we need to be praying that people would be filled with the knowledge. I mean, and not just any knowledge, knowledge that's filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding, that people would be walking worthy of the Lord, pleasing Him in every good way. Three, that they are strengthened with all power so that they can have great endurance and patience. And fourthly, that we would joyfully give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. We need to be joyfully giving thanks to God. You know, someone um, on our staff at uh, Cottonwood shared this morning that they had a family member die yesterday of COVID. And he also shared that he um, had recently uh, just kind of returned to Christ. And we were, while we were saddened, we were also thankful thankful that this brother in Christ is now in the presence of Christ. And so we want to pray for people to joyfully give thanks to the Lord who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. Because listen, whether it's me or it's you, whether it's people you know or you do not know, when they know Jesus, what we can know for sure is that they share in the inheritance of the great inheritance that Christ secured for us on the cross. And in that, we can joyfully give thanks. And what that means is that there are people who don't know Jesus, who aren't, who have not been qualified to share in the inheritance of the saints. And that's why we need to be praying for others praying for them to be filled with spiritual knowledge and wisdom, praying for them to walk worthy, that we as Christ followers would walk worthy of the Lord so that we can be a winsome aroma to those who are seeking. They, they need something. They are looking for something to give them hope, and we have that. And that's why we need to be praying that that we would all be strengthened with great endurance and patience so that we can joyfully give thanks because there are people out there who right now are facing a serious threat, whether it's a health threat, a financial threat, a relational threat. And we as people who have the hope of the Lord in our heart are able to show them and to reflect to them a Christ that loves them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. My encouragement to you is that you pray for others. I'm Elizabeth Mahusai. I so thank you for those of you who tuned in live and for those who will watch on replay. Be sure to put a hashtag replay if you haven't done so already. And be sure to let me know how you need great endurance and patience so that I can pray for you. Listen, go out, be a light, make a difference.